You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Mob Wives After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show, it's AfterBuzz TV's Mob Wives After Show. Hello, 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 Mob Wives fans. I am your host, Erica Garcia Rojas, and I am here with Roxy Stryer. Hello. I'm so glad to be back I for know. this season. I'm so happy you're I back. Know. I missed you I last know. week. I know. I'm back. I'm here to stay. And we're here with Mob Wives New Blood, season three, episode three. You smell delicious. But don't say that ever again. No, don't say that word. Because somebody might hit you. <laughs> don't say that word. That word is banned. We're anti-delicious. That and days. whore is banned, okay? Don't ever say those words. Absolutely. <laughs> so, all right. Let's just get started with this episode. There's a lot to cover. These women are extremely dramatic. And... Um, there's just a lot of things that happened this episode. Well, I have to know because you weren't here last week. How are you feeling about the season in general? Okay, so I'm loving it so far. I right. love the new blood. Um, well, I don't know if I necessarily love the new blood, but I love that there is new people in here. I think they got rid of the right people and they kept the right people. So um, I'm excited about it. I, I like these I like that there's somebody new. I don't know yet how I feel about these new women. You don't have to like the new women, though. You just have to like, like what they nothing. do to the show. Yeah, right. and I like that so far. Good. So, yeah. yeah. Good to hear. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm really excited. I think this is a, this is going to be a good season. And I think it's going to be like, like real, actual problems as we see, you know, Ali, Alicia. Yeah. Um, and her issue with her husband and all that. I think it'll develop into a cool season. Yeah, what's cool about that, I mean, you have to wonder how much of this show is staged. Of course, as a fan, oh. it's something that you have to ask yourself, is this something that they are telling them what to say, that they're saying, because some of the stuff is so outlandish, you're like, wow, are you really that angry? But what I like is when there's actually actual history, like we're seeing with the New Bloods, I mean, they're not making up the fact that she's potentially going to prison. Yeah. They're not making the fact that she's waiting, you know? So I like things like that because that, that can't, be written you know that is fact and i think that's what differentiates this show from a lot of other reality shows because a lot of things in other reality shows are what people are put together and 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 issues are thrown at them but they're 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 like they're fake issues right and it, and what we're watching is how you know these women react to to these fake issues that are drawn out their reactions are real but the situations at hand are just being fabricated right absolutely and in this case with mob wise the background and the information everything that's going on with the husbands and all that that's all real the only issue is that every now and then we you do get a sense that things are being produced and you do you and we'll talk about it with this episode but you just it just feels off with this show in particular. Right. Although I don't know if I could even put it past these women that they would get that angry because maybe a lot of them have anger issues, you know? Yeah. I believe their emotions are real, but I think certain things, uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll talk about it later as we get to that section. So okay. let's start with, um, we'll just start with talking about Drita. And that started the episode with, Drita talking about Lee and how it's so amazing because he's back and he has a real job, but he likes to live lavishly, I guess, in a way. So she's fixing up the house and all that. Right. So he now has this job. He opened his sports memorabilia store and mm -hmm. she's like finally asking him. He comes home and she's like, honey, how was work? And he's like, oh, it was great. Yeah. That must be such a weird emotional Feel, twist in your life to have it go from first of all having your husband be almost a villain and then having him be gone forever mm -hmm. and then having him be back and like the normal husband she just must be all over the place but she seems really excited about it she uh, seems happy right so I, i'm just sitting here kind of feeling good for her because as we talk throughout the entire show we love drita i yeah, mean we, we just love, love drita yeah. and so i'm so happy that i feel like she's finally in a place where 
her husband's not cheating on her and he's not involved in crime and maybe Mm -hmm. this could just be me being ignorant but I feel like he's really moving on and forward with his life and the two of them have a chance at a happy marriage with happy children you know I I hope so but I mean like that old saying like a cheetah doesn't you know you can't give a cheetah a cheetah can't change its spots stripes or something like that (laughs) yeah i don't know i'm not i'm totally butchering the saying but i mean who knows i mean once a a cheater always a cheater also and the sports memorabilia store if there's any kind of kind of store that could be seen as like a way to launder money it would be a sports memorabilia store you know i know that's what i was thinking i was like oh i guess that's legit if but it's Definitely sounds like a cover-up to me. Right. We also hear in this episode, I think that it was Renee who said it, but the best people in the business either either end up in jail or dead. Mm -hmm. Um, And he already did end up in jail, but I think that she means ultimately, and I kind of agree with that. I've never heard of anybody coming out of prison, Mm -hmm. fully changing so – I mean, coming going into prison for what he did, coming out of prison – and fully changing who you are to the point where you are not involved in anything at all. I mean, there's people, there's stories you hear. Right. And so I would like to think he's one of them because I want that for Drita and Mm -hmm. for her family. But I I don't know. And like you're saying, could that be a front? Maybe. Yeah. We don't know. We don't know. It would be pretty stupid of him knowing that his wife is on a reality show and he has this store that's a front right and... but he is very good about being private about his life yeah that's you know? true. we don't see him and especially maybe maybe the reality show not that it's a the whole thing's a front but mm-hmm. maybe he feels more safe because he's like oh well she's telling the world that i am out of this so point. nobody's investigating in me you know yeah. yeah yeah maybe um and then we also see a little bit of drita with her daughter trying to teach her self-defense because she's being bullied in school right um First of all, I can't believe how much Aaliyah has grown up since know, last season. I know. She looked like a completely different person. Yeah. Uh, so she's 12 years old now. And and she, and... Look, she looks tall for a 12 year old. Like she looks like a tall. Okay, that's coming from us and we're two little midge kids. Still. I know, but still, she's probably <laughs> taller than me. I oh, mean, definitely. At me 12 too. years old, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but so anyway, I thought that this was adorable. Yeah, it was she, cute. I mean, I, I was feeling really nervous because. She's getting bullied, and a lot of kids that age do get bullied, and all of a sudden, Drita and Lee are going to come in there like, and it's like, <laughs> uh-oh, she, she's getting bullied. She's not getting, you know, mm-hmm. nobody's going to kill her. Like, just, yeah. I, I know it's worrisome to have your daughter getting, I don't even think she was beat up. I think she was pushed or made fun of, whatever it was, um, but I'm glad now that she was like, you know what, let's let's put her into these self-defense classes. Mm-hmm awesome yeah what a cool thing to do for your daughter and to feel make her feel empowered and safer i think that's incredible yeah i think it's a good activity for a girl that age to do it's got good training physical training there's a lot of good that comes from it and like you said confidence and even drina said like i could see her confidence rising um but you know with with leah being made fun of do you think it has to do with the fact that her her mom is drita on my wives that whole thing I don't know. We had talked about in previous seasons. I think as an 11-year-old, you can be a little socially uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And I think that it has to do with the fact that her mom is on Mob Wives, like you're saying. And some 11-year-olds get made fun of. Like in the world, that happens. A lot of young people get made fun of. And until you know how to stand up for yourself, you're going to continue to get made fun of. So I think that's why this is so great that they're doing it. I, I don't know if it's because of this. At least Drita is one of the more liked characters on Mob Wives, yeah. you know? Um, she's not somebody... I, I think it would be more because of her dad, you know, that she would be getting made fun of. Not that we know that much about Lee, but just because he was in prison and whatnot. Uh, at least Drita, yes, she's, like, crazy. Will kill, but she seems like a good parent, a loving parent. Mm-hmm. Um, she's not in rehab for drug use. She, mm-hmm. you know, she seems... Like she kind of has her stuff together. She's got her makeup store, so I don't. I don't really think that that would be something that people would make fun of her about. I, yeah, but I. I don't know because I'm not a. Yeah, I'm not a twelve year old girl. She could be maybe just I don't know awkward or whatever. And right. Make fun of like you said, a lot of kids are so. All right. So up next, we've got uh, the family dinner with uh, Alicia and her family, <laughs> and um, so we get to see her son, uh, Anthony, and so she has um, three sons. She does, yeah. Yeah, I think they only show Rocco, Carlo, and Anthony. So Rocco, who's eleven, Carlo, who's eight, and Anthony, who's eighteen. Um, so big age gap there. All sons of Eddie's, though. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we've we've got a ten year difference between them, and it seemed like Anthony going off to West Virginia, young man. Yeah, 
So, so we get a interesting little interesting dynamic. We get a little bit of insight into her family life, her her life with her her kids and her family. You see her brother there, um, Eddie. And, no, um, Eddie's the husband. I'm An- sorry. I'm sorry. Anthony, Anthony yeah. is the brother, and Eddie's the husband. And Anthony's also the son. I yeah. Think so. Yeah. The bro- the yeah. son and the brother. Um, and so we see a little bit of that, and we you know, and it's a, kind of that the storyline continues with her, just kind of what she's dealing with right now, the potential of her possibly going to jail, um, and, and the tapes, tapes. and li- and hearing a lot of these things that come up. I mean, who knows? She's listening to hours worth of tapes. What she's talking about is this one scenario between him and his ex girlfriend. Well, she's she's finding multiple scenarios. And, like well, and that's what I'm saying. That's what, I mean. That's what she's talking a lot about. But I can imagine she is learning so much about him, and probably not good things. So I can just imagine, God, what you're going through as you're dealing with this issue, and you're hearing all these tapes and all this stuff come up and all these things that like in years past you thought you had this wonderful marriage and you're like oh my god what an idiot right was, this whole time he was doing this when, when as i was raising our three kids i gotta tell you that this is my favorite part of the season so far mm-hmm. not my favorite because i'm a horrible person and i love watching her life get destroyed but <laughs> the most interesting and, yeah and completely has my attention well this is because this is a genuine this, is, this genuine. is genuine you this is like i was talking before you cannot make this up I'm really liking Alicia as a character. Mm-hmm. Um, I I think that she is a strong woman who's not over the top. Mm-hmm. Um, I did have a little issue with how she I how she was treating Renee and almost accusing Renee of things that because Renee was Eddie's friend and I I feel like Renee's loyalty as she made very clear did lie with Eddie. But I I understand that when you are cheated on and you find out about it. It's like the whole world's against you, you know, and you just want to find out all the information mm-hmm. and, and anybody who's holding information out on you is enemy number one, you know. Um, so I, I do understand where she was coming from. But I loved this scene because this is an Italian Sunday night, Sunday night dinner. And that happens. And I, I'm we're learning about Alicia. We know about these other women. Mm-hmm. We don't know as much about Natalie because she's new blood, obviously. But Alicia, we don't know crap about her. And... Now we can see her family values. She says her brother is her best friend. Mm -hmm. Um, And we're knowing all these things. I mean, I just went home to Jersey and on Sunday nights, no matter, like, whatever you're doing, you stop and you eat dinner with the rest of your Italian family. That's what you do. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you stop what you're doing on Sunday nights and you eat dinner and you laugh and you talk and you have conversations and then you go home and this to me was just such a real genuine moment and we're seeing that she does have these family values you know and I'm learning about her and I'm liking her more and I'm realizing as opposed to last week when I was like you know what maybe she did know that he was doing all this maybe she's lying to us for tv but I really feel like she was blindsided here I really feel like she's a good human being who got put into a really bad or put herself into a really bad situation and I'm feeling awful for her I'm still trying to figure it out because I I I like her. I like what I see so far. Um, we're only getting snippets snippets of different parts of her life. Yeah, we see this family part of her. We see her being a mother, but I don't know yet. I mean, they're speculating that she was in on his business and whatever you know. She was in on what he was right. doing, and I don't know yet from what I've seen how I really truly feel about her because I don't know. Could she have been a part of it? Maybe, yeah. Did she know about the affairs he was having or whatnot or whatever it is? Probably she didn't know, and that's that's why she – I think that was genuine, her reaction to that. Right. But I don't know how closely involved she was with this business. I haven't, I haven't made my decision yet how I really feel about her. And I do kind of think that entire scenario between Alicia and um, – Alicia and Renee, I think that was a little bit produced in a way. I think she – she just seemed upset and she was venting and she just had Renee and she wanted to target her. You're talking about the dinner later on? Well, the oh. dinner later on and even last week when she, you know, had to sit down with her and was, you know, upset about this whole situation and brought it up to Renee. It's like, okay, yeah, I get it. But, like, who who is Renee to you anyways? It sounds right. not like they're close, close friends. If they were girls and they were best friends, I'd understand it. But it's, it seems like they're acquaintances until now. Here's what I think. I think that... We needed new blood this season. Mm -hmm. So we pulled in Alicia and we pulled in Natalie. And Alicia 
happened to know Renee yep. and Renee happened to know Alicia. It wasn't like Renee called the producers and was like, I have someone perfect. My best friend that should be on the show lives in Philly, you know? Mm-hmm. They just knew each other through Eddie. Um, and as Renee says in tonight's episode, my loyalty lies with Eddie. Mm-hmm. Like, 100%, don't be mistaken. Yeah. He's my friend before she is. Um, so I do think that people at home are probably like, how could she not tell her friend? And people aren't really realizing. That they're not friends. They're not friends. Or they're just and getting to know each other. They're becoming friends. And they mm-hmm. were friendly, perhaps, but they were not the closest mm-hmm. of close. Um, and so, I don't know. I, I do feel really bad for Alicia, like I'm saying. And um, I'm a little... I, skeptical with you that maybe she knew about the money end Mm -hmm. of it but i don't think she had anything to do with murder conspiracy i don't think you know i think even though she might have known her husband was a little crooked i don't think she knew to what extent that's the thing it's like these women you know they say oh you know we had the perfect life everything was perfect and blah blah blah. and and i understand that not everything that came about she, she probably knew or knew everything he was doing but like you said she they had to have known that something right to an extent you you live with this man they couldn't have kept a hundred percent of everything i mean you look at your mm-hmm. house her home is yeah. beautiful you look at everything you buy your kids you, you got it where... yet if you pay attention to things if you look at bills you look at everything things like that don't slip by right but sometimes we're so happy with our lives that we don't question them well then and... that, that's a that's a whole nother thing, right though. that's a whole nother thing yeah. so i don't know but i as i said i really like this moment and the other moment that we get to see with her without the rest of the housewives is when she's with her, her sister, sister and her friend. friend um and this is when we get the letter mm-hmm. which i i felt like crying i mean i know you were so like i i, caught I know up in I, it. I was, I was really, like mm-hmm. i know i don't know what it was but <laughs> yeah. i just felt like oh my god can you imagine getting that letter somebody just he completely admitted to what he i mean i wish he had said in detail like, is he in jail right now or is he like where is he i think that right now he's waiting to be sentenced yes so i believe that he is not out on bail i don't okay. think he could she got bailed out and now is waiting to be sentenced at home but he is not because she as opposed to just dealing with money crimes he's murder conspiracy mm-hmm. so i don't think that there is a bail for that mm-hmm. is my guess because otherwise he would be home he would be home um so i i don't know i just i felt really choked up in this moment Why? i i think it had something to do with the fact that she she is so torn like she's so in love with him but does she even really know who he is and and all these things like that he's been doing i mean at th- there's at some point somebody's not just doing bad things but they're actually a bad person mm-hmm. and i think it's confusing is she is she in married to in love with somebody who is doing bad things or is she married to in love with somebody who's a bad person and i think that is like the single element that is runs through this entire show right from the beginning of the first episode of the first season to now when you see it, you saw it with Renee and her ex. You see it with Drita and um, Lee. You see it with all these women. And it's that same issue. Like, he's an amazing father. He's he's an amazing person. He treated me so well. And then he's like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. He's this mobster, gangster type guy. I mean, and that is a fine line. Is he, he's, is he a good person doing bad things? Or is he just a bad person? Right. And, and like you're saying, you... It, you don't know which mm-hmm. one and also you can't help who you fall in love with really so it's just like yeah. uh, but then again you you kind of can you like, kind of can you, you yeah, can't you help kinda... who you love but you can help what you do about yes, it i exactly. guess and it's just like i don't know if if alicia was if he was to come home alicia seems to think that uh that he's coming home way sooner than i think he is uh, she's like well when he comes home do i let him back in he hasn't even been sentenced yet honey like maybe I know, we don't even slow. know what's gonna go on with her too right you haven't even been sentenced come see, home so are you even gonna be there okay here's the thing and and when i when i was reading this letter i know you were you were getting like not emotional but you you were feeling it and i was feeling like dude is this like a, a manipulation and then she, she said that yeah and because she, she's you know she's not we're able to really communicate with him together in a room like you want to discuss these things like she has to somehow i don't know if she emailed it to him did she say she emailed him what she found out I can't remember. Uh, yeah, I think it I don't was know some... how, So if it was through email, even over the phone or whatever it is. His letter was typed, so somehow. Yeah, so, and this is his response, is, is a typed letter. It's like, what is he, throughout he being, he just got caught, she's pissed, on top of the fact that that she could potentially be going to jail because of business dealings with him. Right. Like, I mean, this letter, like, really? I, I, 
I think he would need to do a lot more than just type a letter of, I'm sorry. Well, of course he's sorry. He's sorry he got caught. He's sorry he's in the situation. He's sorry that he's almost in jail. Of course, of course. And like, and she says, oh, but he's, you know, he was such a great guy, blah, blah, blah. Really? A guy that is able to potentially allow his wife to go to jail right. not be, and, and leave the, their kid's child of uh, parentless? I, I agree with you. And also something I really didn't understand and that hasn't been explained to us much is her best friend Tina looks at her and says, since I met you, he's been your primary mm -hmm. source of your pain. pain. And to me, it seemed like we have this perfect life. He treats me amazing. All these things. But he's this guy. But if he's but if he's the source of your pain, does that mean there, there's stuff that you're not willing to share with us yet? Like, is he always yelling at you or what is going on? I guarantee it was one of those relationships that was totally rocky from the start. It was very emotional. And like the minute right. she said that, and I kind of had a sense for that when I was been watching the show. It's like, really? Things are that perfect? Things aren't that perfect and you're blind saying like, oh my God. Like, right. I had no idea. It's I like, wish she would be a little more real with us. Like, yeah. you know what? Things were rocky. Sometimes we had our ups and downs, but... I've been married to him for 13 years and I'm in love with this man. Mm -hmm. You know, that I could see. But every time she's like, look at our family. It was perfect. My kids, my husband, like my house. But how? Even how? Renee said it. Renee, Renee said it when they were having that dinner. She said, oh, it wasn't a lie. It was like, you, you he sold being, you a dream, you not a, dream. a lie. Yeah. But yeah. she sounds, I mean, it sounds exactly what we're talking about. So, um, all right. So. We'll talk about that that dinner right. a little bit later, but let's shift gears and talk about Renee. And so we see Renee, and she's going on a date. We finally get to see her kind of going on a date with a guy. Now that, you know, obviously she thinks she moved on from her ex and all that, so she's ready to date. So she uh, meets this uh, guy, Michael, yeah. at a restaurant, nice-looking guy. And, um, you know, they have a nice, cute little date. Looks like they're hitting it off. What do yeah, you think? I just think that... Some bitches be crazy with men. Yeah. You know? Like, yeah. I just think, I think she's one of them. Yeah, I just think she's one of them. Um, she even said so. She yeah, even said, she says, like, like, when it comes to guys, do not, don't cross that right. line. Um, obviously, we'll talk more about the crazy now. We're talking mm -hmm. about the good. Yeah. What I like is that Michael seems like an, I mean, we don't know much about him, but he seemed into her. He seemed like an okay dude, at least. Um, and he was cute. And I like that he said, I don't care about your past. I'm here for you. But I don't know. You have to wonder. She's like, oh, he doesn't know anything about my You're life. Right. I mean, I mean, first of all, I would say I wonder if he knows she's on the show. But there's obviously he knows. Maybe the second he met her, he didn't know. But cameras follow her everywhere. And I'm sure he Googled her before this. Yeah. Like, he, she's the like, you don't know about my called family. The mob wife. Right. He knows. <laughs> he knows. And so things like that, when we're talking about being overproduced, it's like, I know, I know you know. I, I know. know you know. Yeah. So I don't need her to explain it. Yeah. Because I already know you know. I'm a smart viewer, so I know. <laughs> like, and that that's this is the part of the show that kind of annoyed me because what I love about the show like I said versus other reality shows is that it, there's elements of it that really are really real and you're, you really feel like you're seeing these lives being played out right. and major decisions are happening and you actually get to view it um, you know at home and all that but this is something where you're like <sighs> Really, really, the guy doesn't know that she's on Mob Wives 1 to, you know, her past at all. Like, yeah, he had to have known. And for them to pretend that he didn't know. And, oh, my, oh, I got, and, and, and it's so awkward the way she even brought it up during the date. Like, if it was a real life situation and you're dating this guy and the first two seconds you're like, oh, oh, by the way, I need to tell you that right. blah, 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 blah. It's like number one rule of dating. You don't throw up your entire past history the first 10 minutes of the date. Do you think that sometimes they do it on the show to remind us because everybody has so much baggage and ish that like they think that we don't remember that her ex-husband is a snitch? Do you know, like, do you think that they're doing it for us? Uh, maybe. You would hope not, though. Or are they doing it for the drama or... Because I think as as viewers, you see that and you, you you don't like it. I don't like it. As like loyal viewers to the show, you're like, come on. Yeah. So maybe, maybe that that's a way to, to bring that back. But I don't right, know. It's just dumb. I think that the show, yes, they love loyal viewers. But I think they also bank on the fact that some people are scrolling through the TV mm -hmm. and they stop on this and there's drama and it's awesome. So I think that sometimes what they want is just to catch people up on the situation. Yeah. That's why every time you see one of the, every single episode that starts, you see Drita. 
um, how she's connected to the mob and where Lee currently yeah. is. You know what I mean? Like things like that. Yeah. They're always doing that because we we know that his name is Lee. We know, you know, and all of this stuff. But if you're just tuning in, you don't know. And yeah, I think confusing. that they bank on the fact that the show is so – once you put it on, you can't turn away and you can't yeah. turn it off. Yeah. And that's what I think that they're d- doing here. I think they're like, oh, well, Renee hasn't been on a date. How come? I- I'm new to the show. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Yeah. But, but as loyal viewers, we don't like that. Even not loyal viewers, too, though, because you even know, you know that, like, really, this guy doesn't know that he's on a reality show right now and that you're the show they called Mob Wife, so you're probably the wife of a mobster. I mean, you know, even if you don't, aren't a loyal viewer, you watch, look at that and be like, mm. Like, say, say, say you, you hadn't been watching the show all along, you watch it for that two minutes, you're like, God, that seems fake. <laughs> Turn it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? I know what you mean. So it's kind of like that. I was kind of disappointed about that whole thing. Um, but anyways, whatever, they had their little date. Um, and, oh, I want to mention, like, Drita did an amazing job on uh, Renee's makeup. Oh, my God. Awesome. Oh, my God. She I mean, so good. I thought it looked amazing. Yeah. And I was, I'm happy that we are getting to see Drita's makeup in Little action store. and that we're yeah. getting to see Renee's fashion line. You know, I was talking about this a little last week, but these women have aspirations outside of the show and they're coming to fruition and we're getting to watch it. Mm-hmm. How cool is that? Yeah. I know, so I, I like that. it. I like it too. And like speaking of just like one quick thing, like the whole like produced, you know, part of the show, like that whole thing last week with like the stalker, Rita, uh, Drita store. I thought that was weird and produced too. Oh my God. No, we, we completely, Gabby and I thought really? different. By the way, my poor mud's a bull. Not oh, here tonight. Not here. She'll be uh, back at some point. Yeah. She'll <laughs> come and next go. Week. Yeah, she'll come and go. Um, no, we, I liked it because since they blurred out his face, we thought that, you know. No, they we, didn't. Yeah, they blurred out the stalker's face. Mm, yeah. Did they? They blurred his face. So we were like, oh, this isn't an actor that's hired that wants camera time. So we thought that it was Did you think it was real? Because like, yeah, the chances so. of the, the stalker coming while the alarm guy was there and it was filming. I get what you're saying, but I did don't you know. See, something about you thought it, it was real? Yeah, I did. So I was like, because like, why would they be filming? I don't know. Just seemed like kind of like a weird storyline. We gotta it's talk to left right about this. Yeah, we do. Yeah, because it's like you we're know in what? contact with them. We're gonna give them a we call will. and see what's the ish on this. Yeah, and um, and I'm working, you guys, on getting Renee back uh, in an interview. And for those of you listening, um, we did a great interview with Renee at the end of last season. So make sure you check it out. She 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 got she even started crying a little bit. We got her to cry. She uh, she opened up a lot. Are like, you proud of yourself? <laughs> well, I mean, it was a very, it was a wonderful. I feel like when I watch this show, I feel like I'm like rooting for Renee just because I got that like hour to talk to her. Yeah, and she yeah, was yeah. so cool. Great. So she was just so cool. So just like a little plug for that interview. But anyways, back to the show. What were we were talking about? We were talking about, oh, Drew does makeup on Renee and, right, right. and all that. Okay. So let's move on a little bit to the first part of, the drama, I'd say. It's the dinner. Well, if we're just for before we wrap okay. up, I just wanted to briefly mention because we see this one second and I feel like it's Okay. I, I think I think it's foreshadowing Got of something it. to come because otherwise I don't think they would have aired it. But Big Ange gets um lunch with her son AJ and we she's he's having a baby with his girlfriend, Gabby. Mm-hmm. Shout Gabby. out to Gabby. <laughs> and all of a sudden at the window is the person that he was arrested with. And apparently he's like clean and doing well now. But I just feel like there was something more to this that we're going to see. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't really know what it is. But Big Ange seemed excited to be grandma. Um, Again? I think she yeah. says she's, I think yeah, she to has be, another grandkid. Yeah, so to be grandma to AJ and Gabby's kid. Mm-hmm. So congratulations to them. But he did say he didn't want to get married. He did, mm-hmm. um, and she was like, "But that's the right way to do it." And I don't know why. I, I don't know much about AJ. I don't either. Uh, so I, I think we should do some recon there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sure we'll see more of him. So yeah. Okay. So now we'll talk about the dinner with the ladies. Right. All the ladies except for Natalie. Mm-hmm. And they go over to um, Alicia's house. She cooked some dinner. Yeah. And um, in Philadelphia, so they make the trek out to Philly. And I want to go to Alicia's house for dinner because her with the Sunday dinner and then with this dinner, that that table looked good. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, give me some of that. Salad. She got some pasta and all yeah. that. It's not, it's not gluten free though. We I know. Don't, we don't uh, you don't know that. It could be. It could be. It could be. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so the ladies are there having like a really nice time, drinking wine, and then just right away, Alicia. <laughs> 
like true to form, she just starts talking about she. They were not speaking of something, and she goes, yeah. "Speaking of which, speaking, it was like completely unrelated." She's like, "All right, I have to talk about this. I'm going to talk about it right now." And um, she talks about the whole thing that she had with Renee and her ex. We already talked about it. Then you know, I mean, I mean, her husband well, talking to her ex. You and... know, when something's on your mind so much, and that all you could think of is that, so you might as well just lay it out on the table. That, Speaking of which, that like... or the producer was like, "Okay, you got to bring it up during the center somehow." Yeah, I that's mean, I think what it they looked know, like to me. I think they know that. Yeah. I think that the girls know at this point, mm-hmm. like what they're looking for. I, yes, the producers are probably still asking for it. Um, I think it's very different than you know we used to cover Jersey Shore here together mm-hmm. on Jersey Shore. Uh, we would always talk about how the producers didn't have, as Kevin, one of our other resident hosts, would say, their dick in the soup all the time. Mob Wives clearly has their dick in the soup, which means that the producers are kind of controlling the outcome and and whatnot. People are like, I'm I'm just realizing now that people are like, what the hell is is dick in the soup? Um, We talked about that all the time at Jersey Shore. Right, right, right. So I do think that you're right. I think probably on the call sheet it was like, Dinner at uh, Alicia's house to discuss mm-hmm. what happened. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So yeah. I think everybody shows up knowing that it's going to come out. Uh, but it is still like even if somebody said to you, "Listen, Erica, um, you you have to talk about something." It's still even awkward to bring up. You yeah, know? yeah. Even yeah. though everybody knows you have to talk about it, it's like and it make, looked awkward. Yeah, it's, you like was... make small talk for a little, and then it's like. Oh, right. I know we're talking about the weather and speaking of the weather, hot out and speaking of hot my husband and he was cheating on me. So here, you know, yeah, like. Yeah, and that's exactly what it looked yeah, like. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's a little forced, but we got to get there somehow. And this was also like a, a situation where I do feel like editing had a huge play in basically creating a dramatic fight when the reality was it. what I got the sense of from watching this. It just looked like that Alicia was really just venting. In a right. Way. It wasn't like, like she wasn't like... It, it, it didn't look at all like her and Renee were fighting because Renee didn't say much. It was Alicia just venting and just upset and everything. But they edited it in a way to look like they were fighting with one another. But it, it there were didn't a look lot like of, that. There were a lot of quick cuts and there mm-hmm. were a lot of medium and close-ups. We didn't get a master shot throughout the entire no. thing, basically. So I think I'm on the same page as you. Uh, we didn't. It's not like in the other scenes where we see one girl with a knife about to stab the other girl, <laughs> and then we're watching and the whole table's going the crazy. The table and the hair and the, the extension. This was like almost. I feel like they could have taken the looks out of context too. It would just Renee kind of would give yes. like a huh, yeah. and then the, and you see Big Ann's going what? Yeah, yeah. And, and then you see Drita like rolling her <laughs> eyes, and then all of a sudden you see Alicia like wah, wah, yeah, you know. So yeah. I'm with you that it, it could have been editing for sure. Mm-hmm. I think so. Uh, and yeah, she was just passionate about she it. She was. She was passionate. She of was course. venting. She was upset, and that's exactly what it looked like. So, all right. So, okay. Now we are here to the the last part of the episode. Oh, cringeworthy! I yes. don't even know how we're going to talk about this. Yes. So finally, and I was wondering, like, when are we going to see you know the new girl, Natalie? So the first time we see her is at this girls' night. You know, it's a club. They're oh. at a table. They're drinking. And mm. they're just kind of like having fun, sort of, in an awkward way because Natalie keeps on calling the girls whores and Drita's not feeling that. Uh, 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 it's and so awkward. it was just awkward. And like Drita was just being way too, like, in my opinion, I love Drita. We love Drita here at After Buzz. We, we were like obsessed with her. We think she's amazing. But I thought she was being kind of dramatic. With like, oh, don't call me a whore. Don't call me a whore. It's like, oh, my God. This girl, Natalie, is like an idiot. Don't even take her seriously. Wait, things like, that's what they're all doing. I have to ask you, though, before, like, do you think that this has to do with maybe a generational gap? I mean, Natalie's a lot younger. Is she? Than, yeah, because How they- How old is she? They were, when they were casting her, she's in her 20s. Is she? Because I, it was funny, because when they kept on saying, oh, we need this, like, a really young girl, blah, blah, Natalie looks younger, but she doesn't look like really, she doesn't look like she's, like, in her early 20s. I have to look this up, but if you guys at home know, please yeah, tweet at us or call in or YouTube, iTunes, all that stuff. Yeah. But I, I, I'm going to look it up next yeah, week. Yeah, I want to look it up is. too. But I do think that there is at least a 10-year difference between them, if not more. Um, Possibly. Right. So anyway, I, I don't know, but I think that something that is very typical of people right now in their early 20s is like, you're hey such whore. a slut. Hey, yeah. whore. Oh, mm-hmm. my God. Like, yeah. skank. Things like that. As much as that sounds like an insult to maybe somebody who 
would have used that as an insult. Mm -hmm. uh, there's just this weird thing about it nowadays where it's, I mean, like, we, hey, we, bitch, we, heard, hey, slut. we heard Natalie talking about it and you wanted to punch her in the face almost, not you specifically. I'm, I'm talking about myself. Yeah. I'm, I'm no, thinking a lot of people because it's like, the way she described it, no, I mean like whore, like you're so sexy that you could totally <laughs> be a whore, but you're not. <laughs> so like, like, her what? definition yeah, of that, was like, that you could be a whore because you're really sexy. First of all, most whores aren't that sexy yeah. unless like you're a super high end it was whore. Just, it was just like, what are you even, do you hear yeah, yourself just, right now? If you're somebody who uses the terminology and I'll admit sometimes I'm like, like, Hey, bitch, yeah. what's up? You know, yeah. I, I hate myself for doing it, but I am that girl who sometimes says that. And if somebody were to ask me about it, I'd be like, oh, it's this stupid thing that I say. I don't even know why I say it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it, And it was taken out of context. It was like, if you look at the context, and I think even Alicia said this later, I was like, look at it. She was like saying, hey, da-da-da, da-da-da. Like, it was She said it fun. so many times, I know, dude. and that, that's why it got to the point of awkward. It was like, whore, you're a whore. Oh, my God, whore. That's look so at that whore. I like, know what just like why did you say it so many times and it's just funny how like how bothered Rita got by it too and that's the one thing with these women nobody can let anything go everything is like an event everything is like a high emotional peak of like oh don't call me whore blah, blah, blah. it's like do you know what I think you're an idiot I don't know why you're saying whore I'm just gonna ignore it I wouldn't even just say, I wouldn't even say that no, I wouldn't even right. I, that, that's me in my head Oh, oh, that would be oh. like me sitting there like looking at her and like thinking it but like not saying it and probably wanting to get up and walk away if anything i would so turn annoying. over to whoever yeah I was talk shit with. yeah no not even <laughs> i'd turn over a big edge be like yeah. like what is with this whore thing yeah. whatever you yeah. know like, exactly who cares who cares unless you honest to god which i think they knew she wasn't unless you honest to god think she's calling you a whore, whore which unless they unless she was like you are a whore yeah. like in that tone but it was clearly an endearing tone yes um which might be confusing but it, it, was, it was it was definitely not trying to um, insult anybody. antagonize or what a, insult yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree and I, I think agree. Drita knows that inside yeah which it might is... make the girl dumb but it doesn't make her mean yeah 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 I agree well I mean that wasn't the only word she used that was a no-no that night oh yeah horror wasn't even the biggest no-no no, who would ever thought big, that delicious the... would be such a bad word <laughs> yeah. like a curse word yeah, you don't ever say don't say the word delicious in front of Renee um, nah -uh, not when it comes to her man um, you take that to the grave that's yeah. what Drita said you delicious. think he smells good take it to the grave <laughs> Like, oh, oh my, my dear God. God. I really think that I could have made this mistake. I really think that could have been me. Yeah, I could. No, I don't have. I would never use the word delicious. I would I use think delicious. I think I if wouldn't. I first met somebody and I knew that it was one yeah, of these people's husbands. I, yeah, I think I would spell it, say it like that. Or I would just, or I'd be like, or I, would, I don't even know what I would do. I, I just wouldn't have thought about it if I'm out with drinks with my friends and, and a guy, and I in the least flirty ways, a guy smell good, I'd be like, you smell great. Like yeah. something like, yeah. oh but, wow, but leather cologne or something. It, like, it's funny because I think, like it seems like Natalie, her personality is a very flirty kind of personality and she's probably like that with everybody. And she even right. said like, yeah, I told him it was, I was paying him a compliment. And so like if you know this girl and you see who she is and you were like, okay, that that's who you are and whatever, you're just this flirty, whatever. But the way Renee reacted to the situation, in my opinion, gave Natalie way too much importance. Right. It, and, and she made it embarrassing. She made Renee it kept being like, so I will not be embarrassed. You're embarrassing yourself. Yeah. She was, it, it was, the whole situation was so awkward and so embarrassing. And to be quite honest, I think Renee made a fool of herself because she gave this, you know, little, like, twerpy girl some a lot of importance in this situation with with renee and this new guy right and we're noticing that renee what it seems to us she is back on the drinking um i know that wasn't her problem that she yeah. had a problem with pills but i don't know if she ever stopped the drinking but i i don't know maybe because she was drunk she was more emotional i don't uh, know if she was drunk in this scene i don't know do or, you think she was drunk i don't i'm or not tipsy? sure tipsy i do think but okay i have a question for you and this is a little off because if it it, it's a uh, boyfriend versus a husband, but if I, if you were it's introducing me- not even a boyfriend. Yeah, it's some not guy even a boyfriend, she was right. Seeing. It's a random. But if I was meeting your husband for the first time and I leaned in and I said, oh, you smell delicious. 
what would you say something to me? Would you think it was weird? Would you not even care? Like, how would you feel I about that? I wouldn't care. You wouldn't even care? No, I wouldn't care. I'd be like, whatever. You? Oh, I would probably because say, like, I yeah, know. he does. It's, it's yeah, whatever. Yeah, I, I brought him to yeah. or whatever. <laughs> because I know you. And right. I'm friends with you. I know my husband. I'm not a random girl to I you. I know. And yeah. that's what, the thing is, it's weird because Natalie's not a random girl at the club. Mm-hmm. Natalie's supposed to be Renee's friend at this point. Natalie's supposed to be the face of her company. She's supposed to be somebody she trusts. Mm-hmm. So if you can't trust her enough to hug the new guy you're seeing, hello, then I don't know. I think there are bigger issues than you're letting on. Well, and I don't know if there's necessarily the issues with Natalie per se or just, that's just Renee is in general. I mean, she probably has a lot of, yes, (laughs) probably. And she's had a lot of issues with men throughout, you know, her relationship with her ex and everything. And she probably has trust issues. Oh, she has huge trust issues, but understandably. To make such a big deal as something so small like this, I would be scared to be friends with like Renee or be around her and her guy for fear that you instantly say something and you're like oh shoot and then she totally took it the wrong way okay so after Renee does storm out if you're Natalie do you follow her no I no. I I think hell no why I think, would you and, and that's where Natalie makes herself look like a fool I if I were Natalie if I Renee sat- Renee's leaving the situation she's right. leaving the situation because Renee doesn't want to be embarrassed which I think it's too late I think yeah. by Renee already making a big deal to me, it's she's embarrassing herself. But she wanted to leave. She didn't want to be a part of it. And Natalie just ran after her, and that was stupid. If you're Natalie and you stay sitting there and you turn to the other girls and you're like, did I say something wrong? And they're like, oh, she's crazy about guys. Like, don't say that. I would have been like, oh, I'll call her tomorrow morning. Yeah. And, and, be, I, and apologize yeah, that I and, and didn't know that whatever. And that would have been it. Mm-hmm. I really think that would have been it. Yeah. But now it's like this huge thing where now we're getting separate oh, brunches and everybody's talking about it. And it's like what like she didn't go up to him and say it's at the equivalent the way they're reacting is the equivalent of her going up and hugging him hello and saying you smell so good i want to have sexual exactly intercourse yeah with you. Like, yes you know what yes, I, like, I know and and that would have been more exciting i think yeah. you know? like, <laughs> <laughs> because uh, why did she say that yeah because now we're seeing like the next episode and the and the season playing out based on this one little weird trivial thing that happened that got completely misconstrued and completely blown out of proportion right it would have made be more interesting if something real actually happened i, I don't and know and i hope it gets like squashed because it just seems stupid to me i think that i think that this individual thing will get squashed but i think that it will be yeah. used against her in terms of i think she's going to keep doing things like stupid this thing. and it's going to be like yeah well you you remember that one time when you did this that's like the time that you did that and you know things like that and i I think that Natalie is just way in over her head. I, I don't think she knew what she was getting herself into. Well, then she didn't watch the show. Anybody watching the show knew what you're getting. You know what you're getting into. Yeah, but I don't know. I still feel like if I'm if I met one of them after watching the show, if I was cast in Natalie's role mm-hmm. on the show and I met him, I would think I would be smart enough to not to say that, but. It's not like a definite no no. You might have said the delicious thing, but like you said, I don't think you would have run after her. I think you would have you would have sat there like I would have too. If I had said something wrong and I'm like, okay, what the hell happened? Yeah. And I she leaves, I'd be like I would have been like, Oh, yeah, I would have done the exact same thing. Like, what did I say? What did I do? Like, oh oops, oh well, okay, I'll just call her tomorrow. Yeah. And that's it. That's it. They both thought it was such a big deal that it became a big deal. Yeah, exactly. But it wasn't a big deal. It wasn't a big deal. I know. Nothing was a big deal. And, and the, for the guy, if I were the guy, oh, I would I be like, Oh, I feel so bad for him. So embarrassing. Like, you just met this girl, and all of a sudden, like, you are in a, a situation that you do not want to be in, and you are not her man, and the last thing you want to do is be at girls' night. Yeah. And, because, like, just drama. Guys hate drama. Guys hate, hate drama. drama. They, it was the last thing they want. And all, hate and, it. And there was no need for it tonight. And, honestly, it was caused by Renee, in my opinion. Yeah, I think it was caused Even by Renee, Even though it was too. initiated um, by Natalie, it was caused by Renee. Because what was more important to Renee was for her to make her point to Natalie versus making the guy she was with comfortable. Right. And that, and it, although she was saying that, she didn't want to be embarrassed and she didn't want him to do this in front of the guy. She she perpetuated it and she still did. Right. So, I don't know. I, I was a little disappointed by Renee in this scene, I'll be honest. And it became an even bigger deal when we see these individual brunches yes. the next day and Natalie's sitting there saying, that bitch is dead to me. Oh, like, my God. Oh, God, honey. God, really? Oh, God, I get it. You're from South Philly. I still don't really know what that means. <laughs> like, okay, enough. Like, talking to a friend, I don't care. And then we've got... um. 
Uh, Alicia is taking sides a little bit. She yeah. she was kind of telling Renee like kind of exactly what we I thought she I thought she was great too. Kind of like exactly what you and I were saying. Like I think it's Nally just being Nally. I think you maybe and and Alicia has her whole thing of like oh I think it's funny that Renee has this whole separate set of rules. Yeah. One for her man and one for everybody else's. So you're already getting a sense how they're trying to set up this right. Season. Although I think that Alicia is in the right until she brings that up. I think this is completely different than the situation Alicia's mm-hmm. going through. I think this has nothing to do with it. Yeah. Um, but I I was even more surprised with Drita. I like to think as Drita is a little more rational, but sometimes when it comes to things like this, she goes, I'm going to break her face saying yeah. I was joking. Like, what? what? Like, no, you're not. Really? And then Renee, like, flip-flops on herself and is like, okay, let's yeah. calm down. And I'm like, oh, my God, what? you now got Drita, like, all riled up I about know. this. It was just weird. And She's obviously like Big Ange her. wants no part of it. Big Ange is like, oh. Ugh. Like, God. I don't even want to deal with this drama. I'm not even going to show up. It's like, like stupid drama. Yeah, it's like Big Ann won't show up to the dinner with Natalie last week yeah. because she's like, I don't want to deal with the drama. She doesn't show up to the brunch this week. I'm sure she's just like, t- like These life's women. too short, yeah. dude. I don't want to even care. And that was so hilarious how Renee would like totally flip flop. She's like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Yeah. That, let's not get that mad at her. She is the face of my company. Nobody she, can hurt her. She goes, she crossed a line she can't come back to. Like, what? No, she didn't. Oh, my yeah. God. That was the line. The line is the word delicious. Honey, move your line then. Like, <laughs> what? And then I love how she's like, what you should have said. It's like, mm, you smell nice. Why, what's that perfume? Your cologne. Because I like to get it from my boyfriend. Because if, like, if anyone would say that. Yeah, in like, the club yeah. where the music's loud. Ex- excuse me, kind <laughs> sir. Like, what? I love that. The whiff of what I'm yeah. getting. What is it? Is it fresh? I, don't know. I love it. <laughs> like, what? You know people don't talk like that. Crazy. It's just funny. Uh, so, uh, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I have nothing else to say about this episode no, unless you do. No, I think we covered I it. I think we cut it to pieces and dissected it as much as we could. So We made as big a deal about it as they did. <laughs> we did. We're, we spent an hour talking about it, so there you I go. Um, all right, well, that's it. Let's get to some predictions. Yeah. From yes. executive producers Maria Menounos, oh. your After Buzz TV predictions. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, let's switch and it up a little. And zap it in. Yes, okay. Okay, Roxy, you go first. Um, I don't know. I mean, we see that the situation's still going on and that Renee gets dinner with Michael and AJ and maybe it's his girlfriend and Michael seems distant and now she's pissed that it's because of that. Yeah, if I was Michael, I'd be distant too. Yeah. Like, that was a weird <laughs> yeah. situation. And then, of course, the bigger deal is we're going to Vegas. Uh, this yes, op- I yeah. love it when reality shows go to Vegas. Yeah, I know. A bunch you of that. crazy women and they go to, that's my favorite episode of every reality show is like the weekend away at Vegas. I know, but as a human being who legitimately cares about Renee, like, I, I, actually like her as a person i do too i'm very concerned that we see that she's going off on it as big Ange describes a bender um she said i must have missed that she said like oh renee's going on a bender and then we see renee kind of like going crazy and that makes me very nervous Uh, good tv but nervous for renee as a human being oh i hope not yeah um, i I mean i must have missed that i was more excited about the fact that 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 they're in vegas Vegas, i know you're you're like miss vegas so you're like i love vegas i love it and um let's not forget for those of you guys who listen to us Last season, Roxy and I, Roxy had a little bit of a crush on AJ. Oh. Is that still a... Uh, we, oh. Is that I crush love, still there? I cannot wait to see... I was going to mention this before. <laughs> I, like, literally cannot wait to see him next <laughs> week. Like, I'm I'm like, I think that's his girlfriend. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, who's he saying with his girlfriend? She's like, no. Yeah. I, I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> Just some girl. Like, Just obviously. Mystery girl. So, But it's anyway. not me. That's all I care about. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> all right. Yeah. I mean, I don't really have any predictions of the fact that I'm excited they're going to Vegas. So. And drama, and I'm worried. Yeah. And there's in a good pool. way. Yeah, in a good way. We'll have a lot to talk about. So. Absolutely. All right, guys. Roxy, where can we find you? You can find me at Roxy Stryer. And you can find me, your host, Erica Garcia Rojas, on Instagram and Twitter at I am EGR. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for listening, guys. See you next week. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.